Welcome to season three of Locker Room for Growers, a show with human-centric conversations that include compelling stories, unique professions, and those who set the tone for living with a positive attitude. I'm your host, Debbie Ellickson. Please subscribe to the show and check out our past episodes and clips. Follow me on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, threads, and more. Now let's meet our next guest. Have you ever been in a funk where life has gotten stale and you're unsure of the direction you want to take? Or maybe you were laid off from a long-term corporate job and are having a hard time finding a decent non-service industry job that isn't physically taxing. Maybe you've had enough of a toxic workplace, but don't know how to move on. Having the nice job and doing everything right doesn't always lead to fulfillment. Chas Scott has been there, burnt out where everything felt like a chore. Working harder wasn't the answer. Like all of us, he needed more. Scott studied neuroscience, meditation, and learned how to tap into the human potential. He has a Bachelor of Science degree in computer science and a Master of Science degree in cybersecurity. He was named a B Modern Man by Black Enterprise, was selected as the top 30 under 30 by historically Black colleges and universities HBCU Buzz, and a recipient of the Positive People Award by the Baltimore Times. Scott is the author of Success Starts Within, Achieve Your Potential Through Radical Self-Care. Please welcome Chas Scott. Thank you so much, Debbie. I'm happy to be here and happy to join this podcast with you. Okay. First, I have, before we get into the meat and potatoes, I have to talk to you about your cybersecurity background because I find it so fascinating. It's another thing that I find so important. So um, talk a little bit about getting into cybersecurity and also how did that morph into what you're doing now? Yeah, it's a really good question. So I've always been interested in sort of technology um, it wasn't until my father, when I was coming through high school, he's like, why don't you get interested in cybersecurity? I was like, what's that? So they did a quick Google search and I found all these YouTube videos and it looked pretty exciting. And as you mentioned in my bio, I went down to Hampton University, that's in Virginia here in the um, United States and studied computer science. So at that time, I was still trying to just get a broad understanding of how computer technologies work. I thought I would work for like Sony or work in the computer gaming industry. But it just so happened in the curriculum at my university, they had a master's program in cybersecurity. I was like, oh, and it's being paid for? I could get a scholarship? That would be great. So I ended up uh, going into that program and it exposed me to how to use cybersecurity, the jobs that are associated with it. It's such a widespread industry there are a lot of different jobs just within cybersecurity. You got vulnerability management, you could be doing program management, you could be you could be a manager, um, or you could just be on the computer hacking away. So I would say over the past seven, eight years, I've been in that industry as sort of an engineer on the kind of the front lines working for the federal government, but also managing folks as it relates to incident response and supporting um, our nation's infrastructure to ensure that cyber attacks aren't influencing some of our national security systems here in the United States. So all in all, it's been a great experience. But as you mentioned in my bio, there was a period of my life where I was burnt out. I was depressed. I was working harder professionally, but my inner life wasn't getting better. And it really set me on a course to try and understand what was wrong with me. I wasn't feeling right. I felt like my soul was stuck. So I read every book I could in neuroscience and positive psychology and spirituality and metaphysics. You know, I did tons of research, tons of meditations, anything that you could think of. I was looking to improve the quality of my life. And it wasn't until I started to pick up some of these ha daily habits that I started to realize that 
a lot of what we deem success to be, quote unquote, we've almost been hypnotized by. And that's not to say that we shouldn't be shooting for a certain salary, buying a certain car, getting a certain house, or finding the perfect spouse. What I realized was a lot of fulfillment and happiness and joy starts internally and it's expressed outwardly. But I didn't realize that until I started picking up these daily integrative habits. Um, and once I started to do that, I started coaching other people, doing more speaking engagements, and which ended up writing a book, Success Starts Within, Achieve Your Potential Through Radical Self-Care, because I really wanted to change the definition of what success is. Mm. Success can be material items, but success can also be first the care that your mind, body, and soul requires not only to reach your potential, but to sustain it even even during tough times um, in adversity. And you mentioned also that when a person loses their joy for life, it can also influence really their relationships and how they they work and treat other people. So how did that manifest for you? In 2017, you know, that was a period of my life where I started to recognize how my internal self-dialogue, which was very nasty at that time and very negative and upsetting, um, started to affect how I approached and talked to others. So that internal self-talk was affecting people around me, my family, my friends, um, because I wasn't showing up as my best self. I wasn't being the friend that I know that I could be. I wasn't being the son that I know that I could be. Um, as well as in the professional workplace, I wasn't performing as best as I could. And I knew that internally. So oftentimes we don't realize that, you know, you've heard, probably heard the saying before in terms of being on an airplane, we have to put our, our oxygen mask on first. Before we can help anybody else, we have to put our oxygen mask on first. And I wasn't doing that. I wasn't taking care of myself. I was chasing, running, burnt out, trying to accumulate and not focusing on my internal needs um, that my mind, body, and soul required. And when you look, when you know you need something, you need that some help to come out of the funk and you read all the books and, and you do all that and you think you can do it on your own just by doing the books and, and the YouTube videos and whatnot. But there comes a point in time, depending on how much of a funk you're in, you kind of realize you really can't do it alone. And so did that happen for you? And also how does one look for some help to, to start this journey? So it, it definitely did come up for me. Um, but part of the things that I was doing for myself, accumulating knowledge was one thing, but putting your, your, your body physically in a space where people are, are learning and growing is critically important too. So I say a lot to say, finding a coach, a therapist, doing something that uh, can radically improve the quality of your life. But sometimes you have to put yourself in a space around people that have been there before. Sometimes you have to go to seminars. Sometimes you have to, you know, speak spiritual help in a spiritual community, whether that be going to church or prayer. So for me personally, I spend a lot of time with people that, um, maybe had been through some time, some, some tough times like I did. You know, I went to go speak, not speak, I went to go see speakers that talked a lot about the mind and how to calm your nervous system. I want to go, um, you know, be around people that are just positive, just happy. They say that you're the average of the five people that you surround yourself with. And we don't often realize how um, people around us affect us internally. So I started to become very conscious of the people I exposed myself to, um, putting myself around good community of folks. And it's so interesting that you bring this up, Debbie, because in my book, Success Starts Within, one of the chapters, I talk about relationships and how important it is to keep um, good company around you. Harvard University produced this study because they wanted to understand what makes a happy and healthy life. And they 
ran this study for over the course of 75 to 80 years. And I think they did it for around 724 men, but they interviewed their children, their children, children, they did blood samples, they did saliva samples. And what they determined was the people that lived the longest, but also were the happiest were the individuals that had great company around them. Meaningful relationships is the key word. And so it wasn't the accumulation of things and material items that made them happy and lived longer. It was the fact that they had great relationships and people that were supportive, people that were encouraging, um, people that were could lend a hand and had um, empathy and compassion during tough times and adversity. So as we start to think about what success means and happiness and fulfillment, you know, we cannot negate the fact and the importance of relationships. And, you know, that urgent need for regular continual self-care and personal growth, why do you think so many people ignore this and just, you know, I can't afford it, I can't, I just got to get it, you know, I just got to get a job or I just got to, you know, work more hours or, you know, I just got to pay these bills. But in a way, it's almost like a rabbit hole that you can never get out of, right? But how do you how do you get out of it if that is your reality? It's a really good question, Debbie. I one of the things, and I think the individual knows within himself what their needs are. But when you start to really feel like life is not, you're just not feeling it. Something's missing. Your soul be, begins to go on a search. But it usually gets to a breaking point, yeah, right? And typically that that can in that can feel like a nervous breakdown, that can feel like depression, that it can come in many different ways in order for you to say enough is enough. Like I need to seek resources, something needs to change. Um, and as I reflect over my life, 2017 was a period in, in, in my life during that time frame. Even now I'm going through a lot of tough changes. But I know the things that I can go back to, to sort of give me the, the, the emotional stability, um, as well as the comfort that I need to truly overcome the things that I'm going through. For me, that happens to be regular meditation, exercise, being mindful of my diet, because I know what it feels like when I don't do those things. Mm. And... And when you hit rock bottom emotionally, physically, spiritually, um, you know the things that can sort of pick you back up and you can start to recognize them. And, and I think all of us in our lives, we don't realize the importance of these things until you don't have it, or maybe you're not exposed to it. And then people tell you, and you're like, oh, my life gets, you know, it's a little fresher. It's, it's better. My quality of my life is getting a little better. So um, it can come in different areas, different points in your lives, but when you incorporate some of them, you know, your life does get better and you can sort of strengthen the, um, the capacity to, to realize that, you know, there are needs that I need for, for me in order for me to, to reach my potential and to be the full person that I can be for other people. And how is finding yourself science-based? Science-based. Well, I wouldn't say it's science-based, but I, I would say it's an art. Now, the reason why I say that is because everybody is different, right? So one book for one person may open up their purpose and desires and set them on a path to true discovery for themselves and happiness and joy. Another book for that same Another book for a different individual, or so I should say the same book for a different individual could be completely different. So what I, I say that to say, um, finding yourself is definitely an art. Now, as it relates to sort of our bodies, right, and the nervous system and the universe, there is order in the universe. So th there's that's why we sort of use science-based strategies to improve the quality of our lives, um, because an example would be most of the time, right? If you think about it in mathematics, two plus two equals four. Okay, so how does that relate to your body and the quality of your life? Okay, well, um, your nervous system, supposedly, when your out breaths are longer 
than your in breaths, you can slow down your anxiety symptoms, right? We know that through science, we know how to calm our nervous system during states of stress and anxiety. So this is where science comes into play. You begin to have a deeper understanding of who you are, how to balance stress, how to show up as your best self. So I don't freak out when life isn't working out the way that I would like it to. I can balance my own nervous system through some simple science-based strategies so that I can show up as my best self and I can begin to know myself much more effectively. So it's a science to a certain extent, but life in terms of finding yourself is definitely an art. Hmm. Let's talk about the mental health stigmas that come into play as well, especially with the youth and underserved community communities, which you also have worked with. Um, that does play into this as well. What do you do to help these communities and how does that, um, you know, what have you seen that, that personally that, that, made you say, Hey, you know, what? this is, this is, this is the right track. Yeah, no, that's a good question, Debbie. So, um, our nonprofit, we do mental wellness workshops in the Baltimore and DC areas for underserved youth. And we, what we really do is get them into a fun, creative space that allows them to express themselves. We find that in underserved communities in Baltimore and D.C., there is a stigma attached to mental health. So, for instance, you know, when when people say to themselves or to others in, in certain communities, I'm just not feeling that great. I have, you know, mental health issues and things of that nature. We kind of push it out. We don't like to talk about it. Um, so part of the opportunity that Positively Caviar Incorporated, our nonprofit does is expose youth to strategies to help them navigate much, navigate life much more effectively, how to balance stress, how to disrupt negative self-talk. Um, you know, there was a time when we started doing these workshops a couple of years ago where I was teaching sort of, you know, what negative self-talk is and have they even heard this voice in their head, right? So I asked the class, hey, somebody give me an example of negative thoughts or negative self-talk. And one of the uh, middle school ladies, she said, um, you know, there was just screaming stuff out. But one of the middle school ladies to the right of me said something to the nature of, you know, having thoughts about killing myself, right? That's not to say that she was having those thoughts. She just brought up that example. But everybody in the room, when she said that, everybody was like, no, 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 you can't think like that, right? Mm -hmm. The problem with that is the stigmas associated with it. When somebody expresses how they feel, we shut them out and we make them feel yeah. like they're in the wrong. So what we need to do is expose people to let, letting them know, you know, feeling like that. There, have, uh, there are other people that have felt like that and it is perfectly okay. But you also need to understand that there's help out there to support you. OK, and that is the environment that we would like to start to cultivate. And we've been doing so for about eight, eight to nine years now in the Baltimore and D.C. areas, giving them the strategies that they need to disrupt stress, but also giving them the environment where they are OK to express themselves fully to gently remove the stigmas associated around mental health. So that's why we use the term mental wellness as opposed to mental health. That's such a great point because that is what everybody does. Oh, well, you shouldn't feel that. You shouldn't do that. Or you shouldn't. It's like that's, you know, pushing your feelings down and like hoping it all goes away is it literally compounds itself into that funk later. And it makes it worse on physically and draining and every, every aspect of your life. So it is interesting. We hear it every day and you still, oh, you shouldn't think like that. <laughs> It's like right. to control how people think. But um, I, we can assume that having home support, like support at home, uh, is valuable. However, there's a lot of people, and you know, you mentioned some of those communities that have to do this alone. And you know, they don't have that support. They don't have that person they can just call up and say, hey, or they don't have, they have 
they have friends and family, but they don't have people who would understand or would be a safe space, say, to call, to say what they're going through. So what's your advice for them? Yeah, no, that's that's definitely tough. I mean, me and you were talking about it prior to sort of hitting the record button here, but, you know, social media, um, the internet, as well as apps, you know, there are tons of resources out there where you can talk with people and to get the resources that you need. So I, I would say to those people, you know, use internet as your sort of solution and, and find the solutions that you need. Um, there are many opportunities where you can talk with a therapist through an app. Um, you, there are many opportunities where you can find support groups that you can go to for free um, if you if you just do a quick Google search in your area. So, you know, exposing yourself and letting your letting yourself realize that there are opportunities and and things out there that you can seek the resource that you need are critically important. Um, you know, having somebody at home that doesn't necessarily support you, you don't feel comfortable telling them what you're going through, that's perfectly fine. Find somebody else. There are people out there and resources um, that you can reach out to to sort of help you through that. And last, what is some advice you can give everybody to, you know, just even if it's one thing that they can do today to get on this journey, they may not necessarily have to reinvent themselves, but just to find some ground where they can be grounded internally and, and provide their own self-care. Yes. Do whatever your soul calls you to do. I think the most important thing that you can do, you mentioned it, is to ground yourself. Whether that be walking outside, right? Whether that be meditation, whether that be prayer, whether that be just complete silence or journaling, do something every day that grounds your mind, body, and soul. Um, we don't often realize how these little moments in our lives really can catapult who we are, how we can show up as our best self, but also sort of give us this, this stability that we need during adversity in our lives. And if you can do these little moments consistently, and I recommend in the morning, um, in terms of grounding yourself, um, you, 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 start to, you start to cultivate a habit. And you start to cultivate a new way of looking at your life and what tends to happen is you start to have more self-awareness over maybe some of the changes or some of the things that you want to start incorporating into your life. So I recommend anything that you can do to ground yourself in the morning to really catapult who you are, where you're going, and how to show up as your best self. I love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> I so appreciate you coming on the show, Chas. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. This is Debbie Ellickson. Thank you to my guest and to you, the viewer, for watching this episode of Locker Room for Growth. Please subscribe to this channel and check out our past shows and clips in the YouTube playlist. The show broadcasts from Treaty 7 on Turtle Island, the traditional territory of the Blackfoot people, which includes Siksida, Blood, Pikani, Sutina, Stony Nakoda Nations, and Métis Nation Region 3. Again, thank you for watching and please subscribe.